Never applaud until you know what you're going to get. Okay. Howdy. Howdy. Uh, as has already been said, my name is Don Curtis, and I always thought that when somebody didn't do well at something, one of the first things I would say is, well, the world needs ditch diggers too. And it was just sort of a throwaway phrase that I always used because I love these goofy old National Lampoon movies. But what I was actually talking about was, well, there's other things that you probably can do better. And so maybe you shouldn't do that. And then I got to thinking as I've gotten older, uh, and age does give you perspective to some extent, what if you want to be a ditch digger? What if that's what you enjoy doing? If you want to be somebody who does some sort of manual labor and you feel a sense of fulfillment, who am I to cast any sort of aspersions on what you want to do with your life? One of the people that I most admire in my life uh, is a gentleman who had to drop out of school in eighth grade to help support his family when his father drowned at a very early age. And, and that's my uncle. Uh, and so even though this man has an eighth grade education, he saw value in what he was doing to help his family. And he was always very passionate about that. And that's somebody that I've got an incredible amount of respect for. And so as I get older, I realize, you know what? It's not important what you do. What is important and the way that you are going to have an impact on others is if you are passionate about that. And so you, regardless of your age, you have to realize that you are the arbiter of your own destiny. No one else can tell you what you should do. There's always people in the audience who were very good students when they were in high school or junior high or college. And I bet that a lot of people got the same thing that I got. A lot of well-meaning advice, I would consider it pressure, to be quite honest. Well, you're pretty intelligent. You need to be a doctor. You need to be a lawyer. You need to be an engineer. Okay? I'll let you in on a little secret. I was an incredibly awful pre-med major the first two years I was in college because my heart wasn't in it. My father was a career civil servant, did not enjoy it at all. He thought the best thing you could do was to be in business for yourself, and he equated that with medicine. And I was the, always the kind of kid who wanted to please his parents. And so I embarked on a career as a very middling pre-med major at the University of Nebraska. And what happened was I came to realize as I became more educated that that was not something that I was passionate about. I was not dissecting fetal pigs on the weekend or reading 15 extra pages into a physiology textbook just for kicks because I enjoyed it. I always had my nose in a history book because that's what spoke to me. And that's what individuals have to do. You have to find that calling, that purpose in life that directly speaks to you, that you are passionate about and that you want to share with others. And so eventually I weaseled my way into a double major, uh, eventually getting a double degree in history and biological sciences which I don't do a lot with that biological sciences degree, but I was too stubborn and too proud just to drop it and concentrate on what I loved. But I've got them both now, and that in, in itself has really allowed me to kind of see what's important. And, and those are some of the things that I hope to impart on you today, regardless of your age. It doesn't matter if you are a high school student still casting about for what you want to do with your life, or if you are somebody who's already well-established, but you're looking for something else. You want to make a difference. Okay? There's an old cliche that says, if you do what you love, you're never going to have to work a day in your life. And I'm here to tell you that that's true. But how do you get from point A to that point? And that's what you need to consider. What do you do? How should you go about approaching finding out what you're good at and what you love, you already know. You already know what you enjoy. It was just like me reading history books on the weekend when I probably should have been dissecting fetal pigs, okay? But I did that because it was something that was enjoyable to me, and the fact that now I have the opportunity to have as a vocation, as a career, helping other students find that niche for themselves is something that I will always be grateful for. But you are the only person who's going to be able to say, this is what I love and this is what I want to do it. And I know, believe me, that sometimes that is a very difficult thing because what's one of the questions that you get if you find this esoteric thing that makes you really happy? What are you going to do with that? How are you going to make a living being a philosophy major? 
Okay, what are you going to do with a degree in, in theater arts, who one of our, our uh, future speakers here today is going to be talking to you about? It doesn't matter. What matters is that you love doing it. And if you do that, others will recognize that you do have a great love and passion for that. And also, they're going to reward you because you are very good at what you do, because you love it. I know many people who are miserable in the careers that they're in because they do not have the passion. They either did it for the money, they did it because somebody else, they felt that somebody else expected them to do that. And that's one of the truly sad things that I see in our world today is people that are doing things that they have jobs. They have jobs so that they can make money. They don't have careers. They don't have vocations. And once again, you as an individual are the only person that's going to be able to make those choices. You have to be the one who's going to be doing this for the next 60, 70, 80 years of your life, however long it is. But you have to be passionate about it. If you are passionate about being a good parent, a good mother, a good father, that is what's important. Not because somebody else expects you to fulfill that role. And if you are trying to please somebody else by your choice of vocation, major, career, you're ultimately not going to be fulfilled because you're the only person that can make those decisions. The people that are giving you well-meaning advice, it's not that they are doing it to be malicious, but they are imparting upon you their ideas, what they think a good life is, what a good job is, what a good career is, what a family life is. You're the only individuals. Each and every one of you individually are the only people that can make those decisions. So how do you do that? You surround yourself with role models. They can be younger than you. They can be older than you. They can be richer than you. They can be poorer than you. The important thing is that they are individuals that respect you and you respect them as well. And why do I say that? Because you can look to somebody as a role model, but if they don't necessarily respect you, you may be in the same boat that you are before where you're getting advice from a lot of people and it's not really paying off because they are imparting their hopes, their dreams, their ambitions on you. And we all know that there are people like that in the world, and you have to live your life for you. And if you do that, you're going to be a better person, you're going to be a better citizen, you're going to be a better mother or father or partner, husband or wife, whatever it is. But if you're doing it for you, you're going to be a much happier individual. And you will have greater success because you're doing what you truly want to do not what somebody else expects of you. So find those role models. Emulate their behavior. Okay, What did they do that made them successful? Whatever they did, that's, something that you, that's another arrow in your quiver in terms of developing yourself as a human being. I can't emphasize enough the importance of being very positive about what you want to do. Don't think of the reasons why a history major from a little farming town called Gretna, Nebraska, never really can make it anywhere because it's a history degree and what am I going to do with that? What you want to think about is I've got a chance to impact people in a way that is going to make me feel that I have made a positive contribution to society, to my country, and to my world. That's the opportunities. Don't be negative. Don't look at the negatives when you're making these decisions. Because you know what, if you're a philosophy major, if you're an engineering major, if you are a music major, none of that matters. Is that what you want to do? Do you want to be a philosopher? Do you want to be a teacher? Do you want to be an engineer? You have to be the one that makes those decisions. Nobody else, and I, I promise you this, nobody else can make as informed a decision as you can with regards to what you're gonna do with the rest of your life, okay? There's nothing better than looking back on your life. And my life has never, you know, it's not been a bed of roses. It's not been something where I have been, you know, it's been unfounded success. There are peaks and valleys. But when you realize that you're doing what you love to do, if there are setbacks, you take it in stride and you move forward. Now, about five or six years ago at Christmas dinner at my family's house, my father pulled me aside and said, 
You know, when you decided to go after history as a, as a degree and you ended up getting a Ph.D. in it, you know, I think you made the right decision. And, I, and my first thought was, geez, Dad, 20 years late, but thanks a lot. Uh, but the reality was he recognized that I really enjoy doing what I do. My sense of fulfillment is working with undergraduate students here at Texas A&M to hopefully encourage them to have that same experience that I had probably in my, my early to mid-20s at an earlier age so they can hit the ground running and they're in something that they're passionate about and they love. To me, that's, that's what fulfills me and that's what drives me. And everybody is a little bit different. Okay? Another thing that I would tell you is despise no one. Remember what I said about that 8th grade dropout who had to drop out of school to support his family. He supported not only himself and my grandmother, he supported my father and my aunt because he was the oldest. Okay? And the reason that my family was able to survive the death of the patriarch in uh, basically Depression-era America is because he made a very difficult decision that was very selfless. And whether he thought it was selfless at the time or not, it doesn't matter. I've learned a lot more from that guy with an eighth grade education than I've learned from a lot of PhDs. Okay, so despise nobody based on their education, their social class, where they're coming from in life. You will learn something from everyone. And that's another important point. Never forget that every person you meet, whoever they are, they've got something that can teach you. Okay, they can teach you something that you may have never thought about. So never ever despise somebody based on their circumstances. Okay, whether it's good or bad, everyone has lessons that you can learn from. And that's something that I think is very important. You never want to be one of those people that sits there and says, you know what, I'm in college or I've got an advanced degree. I've learned everything. There's, there's no more worlds to conquer. What else am I going to do? Never, ever, ever stop learning. Never allow yourself to become cynical or jaded to the point where you feel like you know it all or that there's nothing else that you can take from a particular situation because that is one of the worst mistakes that you can make in your life. I'll close with one other thing that I think is very interesting. Uh, my son is eight years old. I have been a little league coach from when he was in T-ball when he was five years old up, and up until the current time. And I will tell you right now that even from five years old, five year olds, I can remember things that I've taken away from those things. First year he's playing T-ball, I'm in the field, and if you guys have ever seen T-ball games or some of you have coached T-ball, you know that a butterfly can shut down play for five minutes, okay? <laughs> So I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to get everybody in position, and I'm pretty competitive, right? So even though they're five years old, I'm like, you need to be here, and you need to be doing this. And I had my son playing first base, and I was trying to make sure that I actually had four outfielders and that one of them hadn't had to run to the bathroom right in the middle of the inning. And I turned around, and my son's standing right next to me, and he said, Dad. I said, Ben, what are you doing? You're, you're supposed to be playing first base. And he reaches out his hand, and he says, my tooth fell out. And my son lost his first tooth in the middle of a, of a t-ball little league game. And I thought, God, you know, I was so worried about the big picture that I really didn't notice that this, this really kind of beautiful thing was happening. And, of course, I went over and handed it to his mother, and she freaked out because it was bloody and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, that's fine, that's fine. But I thought, I've never forgotten that, that the first tooth, okay, the first tooth that ever came out, my son walked up to me, handed it to me, and then went back and played first base. The very next kid hits a ground ball to him. He picks it up and makes the out. I don't know exactly what that moment was supposed to tell me, but what I've taken away from it is another kind of quote from one of those old 80s movies. If you guys ever saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off, okay? Life moves pretty fast, and if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might miss it. Take advantage of those opportunities. Take advantage of those opportunities where those teeth fall out when you don't expect it. A huge event in the middle of something that ultimately didn't make that much difference. So I would leave that with you, is, is never ever forget that you can learn something from anything in the world that happens to you. And embrace that and enjoy it because that's what's going to make you a better person. So yeah, 
The world does need ditch diggers too. The world needs everybody. But you're the only person that is going to be able to make those decisions about who you are and what you want to be.